What's going on folks, Ted from Nerd Immersion here, and we have a whole slew of D&D news that dropped today. Everything from an Amazon page for Bigby's Glory of the Giants to dates and announcements for all of the future books that were set to come out in 2023. It is not all sunshine and roses though. We do also now have a formal knowledge that all of the books will increase in price overall. We'll talk about that all in just a sec. So uh, if you like this kind of stuff, news coverage and all the other stuff I do, consider subscribing to the channel. It's just a little click for you, but it goes a long way to drive this number up here. Uh, I wish this broke it down to further than just the thousandth place, but it is what it is. All right. So first of all, Dungeons and Dragons announces new field guide and release dates for the remaining 2023 books. Right, so if we were to go, you can see that there is August 15th is now the date for Bigby's. We'll get to that in a second. But uh, Wizards of the Coast announced the upcoming RPG rulebook, Bigby's Presents Glory of the Giants, will be slated for August, originally announced in previous things as a spring 2023 release window. Fandelver and Below the Shattered Obelisk, the 2023 campaign book, will be released in September. So we have a release in August, followed by a month later, a release in September followed by Planescape Adventures in the Multiverse box set set for October 17th with the Book of Many Things, which will be released on November 14th alongside a new 66-card Deck of Many Things product. Also announced was the Practically Complete Guide to Dragons, a new field guide due for release also on August 15th, the same day as Bigby's. All the newly RPG books will no uh, notably have a higher retail price of $59.95. So there was an article that was released a little bit earlier today that says, again, these prices will go up. Additionally, the price changes for the di uh, digital physical bundles currently sold by Wizards of the Coast will increase to $69.95. Although Wizards had stated that the bundle will have a discounted price of $59.95 during the pre-order window. So if you're looking to get it digitally, it does seem like that may be the best way during their D&D Beyond pre-order window. If you're interested in purchasing the books digitally, you can get them that way. Um... As materials, transportation, and other product costs have increased over nine years since the release of 5th edition, we've kept the price of our books stable because we are committed to maintaining high standards and high quality uh, products for our fans. We have made the difficult decision to increase the price of new print release books, starting with Glory of the Giant, said Liz Shu, product manager for D&D. &D. We are able to maintain our digital pricing because the cost increase associated with print products does not impact digital products. Players will purchase the digital physical bundles, get them for $59, otherwise after the fact, or during the pre-order window, otherwise they'll be $69. Again, unfortunately, even in the world we're in now, where more or less we're in a post-pandemic world, right? A lot of places are saying COVID is no longer a threat, you know, medically. Supply chain issues are still a thing. I know in my regular job, we're still dealing with supply chain issues as well. So, some things have bounded back, which is a good thing, but not everything is back to where it was. You may have noticed, notably, if you backed a variety of Kickstarters prior or during the pandemic, some of those still have not even delivered yet as they needed to get things out to print. So, well, it is noted that Hasbro reported that the D&D &D sales were up 13% in quarter one of 2023 compared to the same time period last year. And its tabletop uh, product generated over $200 million in revenue in the first three months of the year. Additionally, Wizards of the Coast reported a $77 million operating profit for the first quarter of 2023 and had a total operating profit of $500 million in 2022. Uh, Wizards will be releasing several new products. We'll talk about those. Um, so, again, OGL impacted them, but we knew it was it's kind of on a delayed cycle. I'm curious to see what the quarter two numbers look like. At least I think that's where the big spike in the post-OGL situation will be. Um, <clears throat> but if we come back here, it says full details about the five books can be found below. Big B's presents Glory of the Giants to be released on August 15th. Giants by their size alone are massively intimidating, but it's their magical, elemental, and mythical nature that makes them more than just oversized people. Described through the eyes and experience of Big B, the iconic wizard... And Dean Castra, a demigod of the giant pantheon, the Tome invites players to rediscover using giants as a character as a character subclass, singular notice, learning about their gods, religions, and social structure, and creating encounters that are gigantic in nature and scope. Take a dive into new kinds of giants and enormous creatures that are sure to create humongous adventures and fun for any scenario. Peer into the depths of how giant creatures of elemental or undead variety. Gigantic Beast Jerry includes this book, 76 stat blocks covering stats, uh, challenge ratings from 
one half to 27. So let's see what Amazon has. All right, a little bit more. Okay, yeah, a little bit more here on Amazon. Delve into unrevealed giant lore, including an overview of the hierarchical structure of the Ordning and the Giants' religion and ideas about Giants' organization and societies across the multiverse. Oh, only the Barbarian subclass made it. Adds Giant-themed player character options where adventurers can evoke the glory of the Giants with one new Barbarian subclass, explore the vast world of Giants with two new backgrounds, and unlock eight new feats to unleash runic magic and weird elemental power. Display a wondrous collection of 30-plus magic items, including three illustrious artifacts. Offers a plethora of, dun of tools for dungeon masters, including lair maps, adventure hooks, encounter tables, treasures, and giant role-playing inspiration. And a bestiary with 70-plus new monsters. Um, okay, a little disappointing because I really liked... I mean, I think it didn't do well in the review process, right? We had the sort of giant based barbarian and we had the was it the primeval druid which was a really cool concept for a druid which is the one that used wild shape to summon it was like the pet class druid and i liked it a lot i just didn't think it did a good job i think the drake warden ranger was way better um but it was a cool concept to try to have like you use your wild shape to summon like a spirit or a primeval creature I really liked it in theory. It just in execution, it didn't come out too well, and I guess apparently it didn't do well enough in its survey, so that it was ended up being dropped completely. This is a little bit of a shocker to me because usually these new books, they, I mean, all right. So usually all of these kind of new books, whether they're campaign setting or something like this, again, you look at fizz bands, they typically include two subclasses, right? All of the different, like, Match the Gathering ones came with like, two subclasses. Again, fizz bands came with two subclasses. And again, it does say it comes with feats and magic items and stuff, and that's interesting. But it kind of sucks to me that we only get one subclass. And I know it's not related, but there are people who are going to make the comparison that we're only getting one subclass in this book and you're raising the price of the book and you're delaying it till the summer when it was supposed to come out in the spring. Again, I don't know what's going on there, but uh, it, it's shitty, right? I, I think we can all agree it does suck, right? I wanted two subclasses. I would love to have seen how they would have reworked that Druid subclass to make it work in the current power economy we have in the game uh i would like i don't want the prices to go up i do think this is going to disincentivize unfortunately a lot of folks from going to local game stores right because a lot of places like amazon for example routinely you can almost always get your D, &D hardcover books for cheaper by ordering it even pre-ordering it on amazon that you could from getting it from something like a local game store even I was at Target the other day, and I noticed the D&D books in Target have a sticker on them that say 30% off hardcovers. Now, I don't know if that's with a Target credit card or not, but it, it seems like if you buy your D&D books from some large corporation, you're going to save money than rather than supporting your local game store, which is a bummer. All right, let's get back to the future announcements here. I do have some art we can show as well. All right, so... The Practically Complete Guide to Dragons. This is this is out of left field. We did not know anything about this. Sure, it is the name of the game, but how much do you really know about dragons? Dive deep into the lore, lair, mannerisms, and more of the dragons of dragons in this beautifully illustrated the practically guide to the practically complete guide to dragons. These winged beasts can be terrifying to behold, but the inner workings of dragon society, anatomy, language, and hordes will be a boon of knowledge to players and DMs alike. Updated lore and art... This is odd. Updated lore and art create bold new ways of thinking of dragons, for example, by detailing where they live and what is their greatest enemy, often is another dragon, the perfect gift for fantasy lovers of all ages. I don't know about you, but to me this kind of sounds like stuff that got cut from Fizzbands, and like perhaps Fizzbands was going to truly be a Necrono... or Necronomicon, a Dragonomicon for this generation... And they like cut out a lot of the lore bits and the art and they're like, we'll just stuff it in another book and sell it to them later. Again, purely speculation, but the stuff that they're describing here, the society, the inner workings, the anatomy and all that, that all existed in the older Draconomicon books, right? They had all of that explained in there and it was a nice solid book. And I can't help but wonder if this isn't just like cutting room floor stuff from Fizzbands. 
Also, it was not announced anywhere. This was not on any of the promotional stuff, and all of a sudden it's coming out. Now, if I was Wizards of the Coast and this thing is ready to roll, you should release this in the spring because we were supposed to have multiple books and you basically push them all until the latter half of the summer or later in the year. If this thing was ready to roll, I'd say you'd be smart to release it now or in June to kind of tide people over until your all your other delayed releases come out. It is also odd to me that we didn't really hear anything about this that like as far as we knew until literally today, Bigby's uh, Glory of the Giants was set to come out in spring 2023. This is our first hearing of it. I mean, we were running out of spring here. Uh, but yeah, this is our first hearing about it. It comes in the form of like, here's a whole bunch of stuff. By the way, everything's coming out later on. I, I, just again, the transparency. If you knew this early, I'd rather you tell me two months ago that Biz, Bigby's wasn't going to make it until the fall. Uh, or the late summer, at the very least. Uh, I would have rather known that earlier rather than, like, kind of living in a no-man's land, waiting for something, and then all of a sudden here is everything dumped on us on one day. All right, Fandelver and Below the Shattered Obelisk, again, now releasing on the 19th of September. For fans of traditional dungeon crawls, harken back to the sleepy frontier town of Fandolin, where players can delve below the surface to find a dark and foreboding adventure. Fandolin was the setting for those who sharpen their teeth with the original 5th edition D&D starter set, but this time DMs and players will find out more about the area and people for a fully crafted campaign. It also ties into previous adventures as it deepens the mystery of the strange obelisks found across Faerum. Is this location just another point on the map, or does it all center around Fandolin? This adventure will take characters from 1st to 12th level. This is the first time we've kind of heard, I believe, the level range on this. So it does start at one. A lot of us are speculating and wondering, does this include the original content of Lost Minds of Fandelver for getting you from level one to five and then new content for five and beyond? Or is this an entirely new level one to 12 adventure? I'm very curious to find that out myself. Then we have Planescape Adventures in the Multiverse coming out in October. Again, this is the new three book box set all about Planescape in a similar fashion to what they did with Spelljammer, but in this case for Planescape. Um, let's see, this fresh new campaign uh, collection is comprised of three hardcover books spanning a depth of the look of the city of Sigil, center of the multiverse, an examination of the outlands, the wild realms of bestiary, detailing the wild and fantastical creatures players will encounter, and an adventure like no other throwing players into a plot that threatens to undermine the rules of reality and the very fabric of the multiverse. Twelve factions will vie for power, challenging players to help or hurt the influence of those divergent forces. A multiversal menagerie will request uh, will be present rather uh, will present what appear to be familiar creatures, yet they are changed by their interactions with planar forces. It also opens up the imagination, since Sigil can link to the destinations on other locations or planes throughout the multiverse. And lastly, the Deck of Many Things on November 14th. Originally created in 1975, the Deck of Many Things is known for its power to create chaos and destroy worlds. The lore around the Deck of Many Things will be explored with new story elements around its creation, including the introduction of a new of a new character and an explanation for one of the deck's most mysterious cards. Those legendary 22 cards are back and ready to be used by players and DMs alike. In addition, the new deck includes 44 additional cards that can be substituted in to customize the play experience. The accompanying book of deck of many things, sorry, the accompanying book of many things will showcase a uh, new character options. We don't know what that means magic items, adventure locations, monsters, and more, all inspired by the deck. An additional companion book provides advice and background to each of the cards. This guidebook shows how the cards can be used as traditional oracle deck or to create adventures inspired by the cards. Let the imagination wander as you build a story that excites you and your players. Now, we did see this art here is the cover art for Sigil in the Outlands book, one of the three books in the Planescape box set. We Here we have the Lady of Pain. Uh, we have, this is the cover for the Practically Complete Guide to Dragons. Again, this does sound less like a D&D &D book and more like almost like a coffee table book, as it were. Uh, then we have the cover artwork for Fandelver. Here you can see uh, some goblins here. This looks to possibly be a new creature contained here on this tree. Uh, and again, they are stealing this, this carving is uh, something in the rocks. This one's carrying a big stone. And then we have, this is the, the Book of Many Things. 
here is like the box set and the other thing that comes along with the book itself. Um, it says, oh, and apparently the Deck of Many Things boxed set comes with the Book of Many Things, the tarot deck, and a new cards reference guide. So uh, I'm, I'm curious to see because they're jump They're basically tripling the size of the Deck of Many Things. And it also said new character options. This could just be things like magic items, which would make sense. But it would be very interesting if there was some sort of card-based, um, uh, you know, some sort of card-based, uh, like, class, like some sort of subclass that uses uh, the deck of many things or at least playing cards or tarot cards. It could be pretty interesting. There's a lot of interesting fan-based options about it. I would be curious to see that. Uh, it also could just be feats, potentially, as well. Uh, but yeah, there you go. That is kind of where we stand on D&D news for the moment. Unfortunately, prices are going up to $59.95 for a standard D&D book purchase. Again, you may be able to do better if you were to get it on something like Amazon. I didn't go ahead to see if they put out any pages for the other books I saw there was the one there that we just looked at that was for Bigby's. I'm going to just double check while we're sitting here and make sure there was no other pages or no other like links that you can click to for uh, any of the other books. So what was it? It was the book of many things. Let's see if it has a page. No, it does not. All right. Yeah, usually you can get more information from the Amazon page, as you saw, like we we heard from comicbook.com that there was only uh, one subclass, but when we were to click on the actual Amazon link itself, it shows us that that's just gonna be the Barbarian subclass. Now, another thing to consider is potentially that Druid subclass that we saw, if that is gonna be the, when we hear character options in the Book of Many Things, perhaps that, that Druid character subclass will end up in the book of many things that could potentially be like a summon based thing and the reason i bring that up is wizards of the coast has been pretty consistent for the past eight ish years or so that we get to see and play test any new subclass before it comes out now this is an interesting concept and i made a video all about play testing and stuff like that because w some people would rather have them not play test things at all and just kind of put it out there for us because Every new subclass that we've received since 5th edition has started rolling out new subclasses, we basically got to see them, with the exception of, I think, the stuff that was included in the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide. We got to playtest them in some form through the Unearthed Arcana. Now, the last Unearthed Arcana we received before the kickoff of the 1D&D playtest, and all of the stuff that's going to now be for the 2024 rules book, was the... Uh, the giant, uh, whatever it was called, the giant-based barbarian and the primeval druid. That was the last set of playtests, if, if I'm remembering correctly, the last set of playtests we received before the one D&D playtest began. So what's interesting is I don't know if we're going to see any new, wholly new stuff because we haven't had a chance to playtest it. And I think due to the timing of the necessity of the release of... Uh, 2024 rules revision in 2024 they don't really have the opportunity or the time to deviate from uh the play testing for one D D to just get that stuff in to just be like oh hey here's a brand new on earth arcana with some stuff we're thinking about for a book in the future so i don't know maybe that like i said perhaps the option for character options is just stuff like magic items new backgrounds maybe new spells um Maybe not a new subclass, which is a bummer, again, to see potentially the primeval druid go the way of the brute fighter and many others that were left in the dust. The phoenix sorcerer, the sea sorcerer, the earth-based sorcerer, all these ones that were left in the dust that never went anywhere. Again, I can make videos and talk about some of the lost ones in the past, and I have done that. There's some pretty cool ones out there that I do enjoy, so... Anyway, let me know your thoughts and opinions on this in the comments down below. Nice to finally have the information and the transparency as to when these things are going to release. Unfortunately, it comes with the also the announcement that they're going to cost more money and they're not coming to significantly later in the year. But we did also get the announcement of the Practically Complete Guide to Dragons, a brand new book out of nowhere, 
that we basically weren't expecting. It did go on to say that it was like good for all fantasy lovers of all ages. So I am assuming this is again more of like a picture book or a coffee table book than an actual D&D module uh, or, or like with actual stat blocks or, or useful things like that in it. It just sounds like it's more like the fluff content for the dragon lore. But let me know again what you think in the comments down below. And I'll see you all next time.